Anyway, so today we are going to play the night plume state. Uh, it says, on a snowy winter night, I found a dying little pigeon on a motorcycle. When I didn't know who I could entrust it to with my imp impending business trip, a person came to mind. So that is what we're doing today. Let's start. Okay, I don't know what we have in store here. I hate Silas. Love it. <laughs> Thankfully, there's nothing to worry about for now. Change its bandages every day for the next seven days. Seeing me nod, the veterinarian hands over a cardboard box with a fleece blanket inside. He walks me, the last customer of the day, to the door. It's getting late. It's also snowing, so be careful on your way home. As soon as the glass door of the animal hospital closes, a little head peeks out from underneath the fleece blanket. An hour ago, I had finished listening to a briefing for tomorrow's mission in another city. Just as I was about to head home, I noticed a silhouette darker than the night in front of my motorcycle. I got a closer look only to see the silhouette belong to a frostbitten dove. Picking up the dove, I rushed over to an animal hospital. And then I found myself in a troublesome situation. And may I just say pretty privilege at its finest. Because if it was a pigeon, then she probably wouldn't have rescued it. Even though they're basically the same. <laughs> I'm half joking. I'm going out of town tomorrow for a wonder and disaster relief mission. How can I take care of you and change your bandages? Glad you're resting. I'm going to lurk until this part is over. I haven't gotten this merry yet. And oh, okay, that's fair enough, Marissa. <laughs> Bye for now. The dove shakes its head and the snow falls off its wings. It looks at me without making a sound. As we stare at each other, an image of a certain bird and his owner appears in my mind. Silas, you're just waking up around this time, right? What do you mean? It's his voice. It's so good. In other words, can we meet up in the N109 zone? I need your help. The other person in the call is silent for two seconds. Feeling I might have sounded too harsh, I quickly add in a question. Is that alright with you? <laughs> Even his laugh. Sorry. <laughs> make it in time. There's no reason to keep someone waiting when asking for help. Winter's snow carries rain droplets that fly in the wind. I drive as fast as I can until I knock on Silas's door. Hello, I'm not late, am I? A wave of warmth washes over me. It instantly fogs up my helmet's visor. Bro, he's such a little... <laughs> oh dear, I know, right? I like, I, I, I just, oh, he's, so, he's so bad, I love it. <laughs> With the pretty red eyes. He swipes his thumb across the visor, allowing me to see his gaze that's looking down on me. It falls onto the cardboard box in my hand. This is what you needed help with? Yeah, so while I was on the road... Oh, why is he turning away? Oh, there we go. Hey, wait! Right before I'm about to prevent the door from closing, it stops a few centimetres before my hand. Since when did you start saying goodbye to someone who just said hello to you? He really is fancy. As I say these words, I manage to squeeze in through the narrow gap and enter the house. I stand next to Silas. Oh yeah, Keiki, any updates on Cafe Boy? I'm already here, the least you can do is let me finish what I have to say first. Okay. 
But have you ever met someone more arrogant than you, sweetie? I don't know how I feel about him calling me sweetie, though. <laughs> I don't know. He turns, his emotionless gaze fixed on me. The stalemate lasts for a moment, then he reaches for my shoulder. My back suddenly tenses, making me think he's about to grab my collar and throw me out. Instead, the door is gently closed behind me. It's as if I received tacit approval. He notices my astonishment and his voice carries a hint of mockery as he speaks. My K-pop brain rot make, makes me think he's dug by a non-Aussie feeling. <laughs> I can't stand him. I love this man, dang it. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> Normally you aren't that fond of red flags, are you? So... Not only do you want me to listen to you, but you also want my help. What's wrong, sweetie? Can you only talk if you stand near a door? His hair gives him like five centimeter height. <laughs> That's true, actually. I asked the cafe supervisor one day and turns out Cafe Boy is on vacation. I know, right? Keiki was very brave. I only like couple red flags. Oh, okay. And this is one of them. <laughs> he's not a red flag. He's just albino. <laughs> the living room isn't that much brighter than the night outside. The only source of light comes from a crackling electric fireplace on the wall. Oh, I'm a sucker for birds. Oh. Silas is sitting on the other side of the sofa. He glances at Mephisto as he continues to listen to me recount what happened. That's another problem. He has a bird. <laughs> Either way, it barely survived. If no one takes care of the dove, it will have a short life. Think about it. This dove is still a baby and already has to endure a blizzard while wounded. It's so pitiful. I know, right? That's how I feel too, Keiki. The sweetie is, it feels a bit condescending at times. Aww, um. sweetie, type of thing. Philanthropists help others out of pity. Is that how you see me? Also, why is he always throwing a coin around? Silas throws a question right back at me. No matter how much I try to gain some sympathy for the dove, it won't work on someone like him. Is it just me or this like little coin thing? It's such a like fictional anime thing almost. Then what if it's to help me? Hmm. As soon as I stop talking, a pregnant pause fills the room. Sorry, I saw pregnant and I was like, She's pregnant? Like, I don't even know why I thought that, but... <laughs> Mephisto turns his head and gives me an inexplicable look. Why aren't you saying anything? Don't we have a bit of report? We resonated plenty of times already and had near-death experiences together. You should have said that first. Anyway, I see. You're here to dump a dove on me. And can you have worded it more nicely? <laughs> Maybe the coin is like sword thingy of Xavier. Ah, true actually, it's possible. Cake gave gossip for the cafe workers to chat about until he comes back. <laughs> Cakey was kind of like smart about it though. Silas doesn't respond. He stands up from the couch and then leans down to carefully pick up the dove from the box. He makes eye contact with it, but his words are directed at me. When will you be back? Huh? Aren't you dumping the bird on me because you're planning to be a goody two-shoes outside Lincoln? Oh, after a week, why? Silas ignores the confusion in my words, turning his head to glance at the clock on the wall. 
I'll be waiting for you here, Sunday at 11 p.m. Does this mean you're going to help me? I thought we had a bit of rapport. Why else would I agree to care for a dove I just met? But our rapport is only worth seven days. Be even a minute late. And I'll consider it as you exceeding the timeline. I didn't it's okay, so you you know, you can you can laugh at me, but I didn't realise that report was pronounced rapport. Unless it's not. There are so many words that I've read but not heard, so I like pronounce it or say it in like the weirdest way. This was clearly one of them. You can tell them what happened, Beachy. <laughs> okay, I'll go into detail after this date. Having found the caretaker for the little white dove, I go on a trip to a foreign country the next day. During my six days away from Lincoln, Silas only sent me a few photos taken at weird angles, and it was only if I reached out to him first. Oh, I want to see the dove grow up. A week, that's so much difference. Otherwise, he was surprisingly quiet. This lack of disturbances is rare, and it actually piques my curiosity. On the day before I returned to Lincoln, I couldn't resist starting a video call with him. What is it? I just wanted to know if the dove is okay. I haven't seen it in a few days. Are you worried that I've been treating it poorly? <laughs> Not really, I just miss it. Mm. It seems to be fine. It's already spending time with Oh, the my heart. It's so cute. That means you've taken good care of it. <laughs> what about you? Have you been how have you been these past few days? Why do you ask? I thought you were worried about the dove. And here you are, worrying about me. Uh, I went to visit Okazaki and CNM Unlimited recently after finishing a route. Oh, how are you finding it, Kanati? It's even worse when we have the same word in French, so I suddenly read them in French in the middle of the English sentence. <laughs> His voice is as magical as I remember. Oh my gosh, I know. It's because I'm concerned about Lincoln's safety. After all, you've been awfully quiet for a while. Who knows what evil plot you're scheming? Well, if that's the case... How I have been is none of your concern. I haven't seen enough yet. But I've seen more than enough. What? Don't worry about it. You'll be back tomorrow anyway. See for yourself. Ciao. Nope, he's gone. Damn it. As per our agreement, I head to Silas's house once I get off the plane. I even arrived sooner than I anticipated. Just as I am about to knock, the door opens as soon as my hand gets near the doorknob. What's going on? The door, now open, seems to welcome me inside. When I wonder if I should invite myself in, a voice suddenly resounds behind me. Long time now see. I turn around to see a familiar face, and upon closer inspection, there's a faint bruise under his eye. Oh. Silas, did you leave the door unlocked when you went out? Didn't you say you'd be back today? I look inside the residence, which is too quiet for my liking. Where's my dove? It flew away. Oh my god! I love pretend to see a column Alice found this unlimited. I finished main lies roots and they were nice, but still have some content left, including adding this side. Okay, so it's very much like your typical fan disc then. I love pretend to see fun. Honestly, I enjoy it a lot. It's so light and just feel good game. Yeah. Just as I'm about to scold him, he whistles and grabs my shoulder to turn me around. In the distance, a white creature steps on Mephisto's mechanical wing and swoops towards me. Ah, The white dove, which was barely alive a week ago, is now like a bird of prey. 
Before I can scream, Silas extends his finger. The white dove jumps onto it immediately. Everything's fine, huh? Why are you always messing around? <laughs> oh, thank you for the follow, Xena. I appreciate it. Deceiving you is just too easy. The little white dove perches on Silas's fingertip. It holds its head high and puffs out its, che its chest before keenly scanning its surroundings. Could it be that spending too much time with you can turn a dove into a crow? <laughs> <laughs> You're overestimating a crow's capabilities. Following Silas's gaze, I see Mephisto above the white dove circling it. No, it's possible for a crow to turn into a dove. Gosh, imagine. Before I can say anything, Silas closes the door and walks away. What are you doing? Are you actually planning to keep the dove as a pet? Can it be released back into the wild after a week? He stops in his tracks, then turns his head to look at me. It could have been released a while back. I was just waiting for you. No. Gosh, it's so snowy. I am not looking forward to winter, especially now that I'm enjoying like the heat. <laughs> Today is a wintry night. It reminds me of when I first found the white dove. Snowflakes fall onto my coat. I rush them away and get off the back seat of Silas's motorcycle. Nestled in my hand, the little white dove is energetic. It looks at the river view of Lincoln's downtown area in front of us. Silas, why do we have to travel so far to release it? Oh, I know. You're worried the dove won't be able to find its way home, huh? We can actually be considerate sometimes. Hmm. <laughs> You'd rather release it into the N109 zone. I guess you don't believe it's lived a fulfilling life. Pretend I didn't say anything. <laughs> Fancy you've got a point. Releasing a dove in the middle of winter seems a bit weird. Oh god. The white dove in my palm seems to understand us. It lifts its head to coo at me. But do all doves raised by you end up this sad, though? <sighs> Silas seems taken aback by what I said for a moment. He looks at me. Now I'm suddenly curious about how you see me. In the cootie. <laughs> what a typo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. Are you sure you want to know? I can tell you. I think you're the ruthless, decisive, cruel, merciless leader of Onikness. <sighs> you said you were curious. Then why would you let such a person help you care for a dove? I don't know. Maybe I like to live on the edge. I didn't expect him to take it seriously. Then again, I've never really sat down to think about why him in particular. I just figured Silas would be the perfect fit, so I chose him. Like he said, even a crow can turn into a dove. I kind of thought it would work out in the end. What are you trying to say? Mephisto doesn't understand riddles. Kudi equals Kennedy mood. <laughs> oh dear. I am in love with Senna. I plan to play it next year. I can't really play Changeling and Dark Knights right now. I've been playing B Project and I've been struggling through it, I must admit. It's nothing and I wasn't talking about Mephisto. <sighs> This time, it's Silas who's quiet. He appears to be shocked by what I said. Oh, little dove. I pet the little white dove, then I give it to Silas. Since you've been taking care of it lately, I'll give you the honor of releasing it. 
Silas doesn't decline. He doesn't speak either. The white dove seems to understand what's going on. It flies and lands on his finger. Is there anything you'd like to say? Seeing me shake my head, Silas takes his hands and throws the dove into the air. Go. I'm not sure if the dove understood us. It doesn't linger or look back. It flies towards the moon. And maybe it's a romantic coincidence or meaningful footnote that... Before the dove disappears into the night, fireworks explode into specks of neon and light up the entire sky. I turn my head to look at Silas. There's a bit of surprise seemingly reflected in his gaze. Silas, I've noticed that whenever you want to protect something, you always make sure you protect it well. But that black shirt and coat... <laughs> it's not that bad. Oh, funny. Whether it's a dove or a person, is it only when I'm willing? Yeah, only when you want to do it. The fireworks' various colours reflect on the river's surface and land on Silas's hair. After a moment of silence, he speaks. You think too highly of me. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not a philanthropist. A man's heart goes... To where his treasure is. Silas's cold words dissolve the wind, making it difficult for me to discern what's real or not, but it's, it's, it's as if it doesn't matter. I don't care. After all, I'm not a dove that needs your protection. Really? <laughs> it's for the best. Ooh, there we go. We finally get the movie-esque part. What? Help me. Oh, brushing off snow from his hair. <laughs> A crow? Try not to be the pot calling the kettle black, sweetie. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to tease, obviously. <laughs> Do you know what you look like right now? Smug <laughs> expression. to deepen our relationship. Is she gonna put like loads of snow in his face? <sighs> <laughs> Unprompted benevolence wasn't out of the kindness of your heart. Not cold? We can't see his pretty face Come on, anymore. Follow me. And that is it. That wasn't as exciting as the previous one. But it was cute, so that's something. Fireworks ASMR. He's starting to grow on me a little. I missed a lot of LA L and DS um lore. How did we meet this guy? Not gonna download the updates. <laughs> it was weird to watch a card about the new year in the middle of summer. I, I was thinking the same thing and he said it. I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's cold when it's so warm. <laughs> but, um...
But um, anyway, so the reason why had we met this guy, but I think we end up in like some dodgy zone in the story, and then we get caught, and then he's the bad guy, kind of. <laughs> Welcome back, Marissa. But yeah, so that's that's who he is. He's like the the bad guy that kind of appeared, and then he sort of entraps her in his house place under observation almost and then he wants to uh yeah i don't know uh, the thing is a lot of the the story i'm kind of like reading but also not really reading at the same time so it like kind of half goes in and half doesn't this is this is the curse of uh, mobile type or like jose muke games for me boyfriend tea time it has been so long since i saw that it warms my heart <laughs> you're so cute <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that was Love and Deep Space, Silas, Night Plumes. Hopefully that was enjoyable and that ends this portion of the stream. Thank you.